Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present our study on bladder training in female patients with overactive bladder syndrome. These are Behavioral management, including bladder training, is the first choice of treatment for patients with overactive bladder syndrome. However, there is still not enough knowledge about the proper contract and its best application methods of this treatment regimen. During the COVID pandemic, we preferred phone calls instead of face-to-face -face visits for patient safety, especially for the elderly. This was a retrospective study. We analyzed data from January 2020 uh, until April 2021. In our pelvic floor rehabilitation unit database, female patients with overactive bladder syndrome over 18 years old who were allocated to bladder training were uh, extracted from database analysis. Patients receiving another form of treatment for overactive bladder, like medication and biofeedback, were excluded. Bladder training program was a standard eight-week program. The aim was to achieve a three to four hours of maturation period. The program was supervised by a trained nurse. All patients were informed about overactive bladder and were encouraged for lifestyle modifications. Patients were asked to void at preset intervals where duration of the interval was decided by the patient and the nurse as a shared decision. Preset voiding interval was established as the longest possible duration for a patient without any urinary incontinence. Follow-up was weekly via phone calls. This was led by the nurse to understand patient status during the week and to set a new voiding interval for the next week. All patients signed informed consents for the treatment. We extracted their age, duration of the overactive bladder symptoms. Patients were asked to log a simple bladder diary during the treatment period for their urgency and incontinence epidurals. Pre-treatment and post-treatment outcome measures were 3-day bladder diary, overactive bladder V8 questionnaire, ICIQSF, uh, patient reported symptom severity of the last three days by visual analog scale from 0 to 10 and 24 hours PET test. There were 25 female patients with overactive bladder syndrome treated with bladder training. 23 patients had wet overactive bladder and 2 patients were dry. Mean patient age was 47 and mean body mass index was 29. Mean symptom duration for overactive bladder was 74. Three patients couldn't complete the program due to their compliance issues and low education. Their results were analyzed as non-responder, like an ITT analysis. Six patients achieved over three hours maturation interval at eight weeks. There were no adverse events during the bladder training program. Here in the table, you can see our outcome results for patients on bladder training before and after eight weeks of treatment. The voiding interval was in minutes, seven, 76 minutes before the treatment. You can see it was increased to 133 minutes in the end of the treatment, which is almost a double and it's statistically significant. Overactive bladder score, ICIQ SF score, and was symptom severity scores were all significantly reduced.
As a result, our patient's duration of voiding intervals almost doubled with 8 weeks of bladder training treatments. Although this increase in voiding interval didn't reflect on the voiding frequency at the same amount, bladder training was effective in reducing urgency, urinary incontinence, and PET test results. The percentage of patients achieving over 3 hours of voiding interval at 8 weeks was relatively low. This might be due to the fact that severe overactive bladder patients were involved in bladder training treatment. Strict monitoring of bladder training almost doubles the duration voiding interval in two months for female overactive bladder patients and effectively reduces urgency and urinary incontinence episodes. Identification of patient selection criteria is crucial for better outcomes of bladder training. Non-pharmacological treatment of overactive bladder with bladder training is possible by phone calls even in pandemic conditions where hospital-based options are avoided. Prospective randomized control trials are needed for the effectiveness of remote visits. Different telemedicine methods like phone calls or video calls might have different outcomes. Thank you for listening.